Today I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to make some uh, Halloween inspired pen blanks and by that I mean I'm going to do orange, black, and white. But what I'm also going to do is add a little bit of orange glow powder. I don't know if you'll be able to see it there but it has a really cool look. I don't know how this will work. What I'm going to do is mix a little bit of clear and put the orange glow powder into the clear and just mix that into my colors. So it's an experiment that will hopefully work and uh, if it does it could look pretty cool. Now I am going to use PVC molds because my other molds are being used and I'm going to use our plugs. If you haven't seen these Maker Select plugs, they're really easy to use. You just, oh, watch your glove. Insert them into the PVC and you're ready to go. I'm going to do four of these so I rubber banded them together just to prevent tipping. Uh, I'm going to use P-Town Mica, I'm going to use Saffron Orange and Charcoal Black. These will give me the colors I want. With those, I'm going to put a drop of black alumilite dye and a drop of orange alumilite dye, and that'll just brighten them up. And then I'll use standard white, no mica, just the white dye, and then clear with the glow powder. So let's get mixing. So I've got my cups ready. Uh, like I said, I'm doing four colors. What I'm making is black and orange are going to be the primary colors. I've got two ounces of Part A alumilite in each of these cups, and then one ounce of Part A in these two cups. This is going to be my white and my clear with glow, and then my orange and my black will have the bulk of the color. So what I'm going to do first is add my mica and my colors into these. This is the saffron orange, and this is a nice bright orange. It'll give it that shimmer, and I'm taking two pretty nice little scoops and one drop. And you can see why I wear gloves, because touching any of these bottles will make it make your hands dirty and you can see that dark streak in there that's the dye and I like to mix the the mica and the dye into part A because here in Arizona with our hot dry temps my resin goes off pretty quick so I want to make sure that I've got this all mixed how I like and you can see that's a nice bright color now for the second two ounce cup two ounce of part A so it's gonna be four ounces total this is the black charcoal black I'm going to do, that, that's like two small scoops, so I'm going to do that. Nice and fluffy. And I'm going to do a drop of dye. Whoa! That's what happens when you puff air into a pile of mica. Jeez Louise, that was genius. There we go. All right, so that made quite a mess, as you can tell in the cup. But by the time we get part B in there and get this all stirred up, it won't make a bit of difference. Now second, or third color, I should say, if you want to consider white a color. You gotta be real careful because this stuff comes out fast without the nozzle on it. And I go a little heavy on the white. That's more than enough. And actually that puff of black got a little bit of black into my my other two cups here, so you never know what's going to happen. So I'm just stirring up that white. And then the clear, I don't have anything to do. Now with the glow powder, I haven't done this before, but my thought is I'm going to put it in clear. I'm going to mix it after I put in my part B and it's started to warm up. I want to wait till it's really at the highest part of the temp zone of when I can pour because glow powder is very heavy. It's almost like a real fine sand. So it's going to want to settle. So if I pour it in right away, and mix it up I'm gonna have to keep trying to scrape off the bottom and stir it up and then when I go to pour it's gonna try to sink through the blank so that's just a theory we'll see how it works all right so now I'm gonna add my part B and I'm using a Lumilite clear slow I'm gonna zero my scale I've got two ounces in each of these two cups so I'm gonna pour real carefully two ounces into the black and then each of these is one ounce, so I want to zero my scale and do one ounce. That way, it's a lot easier than trying to pour a, a, a whole thing out of a big jug, a little tiny amount out of a big jug, I should say. Oh, just a hair more. All right. So now, these all have their part B. Need and I can just stir. The clear is obviously the easiest because I can actually see the, the streaks if there are any. 
So I want to stir these nice and thoroughly, scraping the bottom, the sides, and making sure I get them fully mixed. So I'll come back to that one. And what I like to do also is get a quick temp when I first pour. So 80, 83 degrees is kind of our starting point here. It was probably more like 80, but even just sitting a few minutes or a few seconds with the part B in it, it warmed up. So again, scrape the bottom, scrape the sides, and then just really stir. Hundred and one, ninety nine point six, hundred and one, hundred, ooh, nice, hundred and two. So, this is my glow powder. Uh, this is like a 25 gram jar that we have here at Turner's. I'm actually going to wait even a little longer. So, what I've done, because I'm going to set this down in there, I'm only doing these blanks. I'm not doing a bunch of blanks, so I'm not going to use the mold rack. But rather than just setting these in there and risking them tipping, I'll put the, uh, the molds in a cup. You could always stuff something around it if you're worried about it tipping over. But just you just want it to be stable in the pot. So that's pretty easy and those aren't going anywhere. I like to use paper cups, no wax, because I like to be able to pinch them. I'm going to start by pouring a little bit of orange at the bottom of each one. And there's no wrong or right amount. And then I'm going to pour a little black. And what I'm going to try to do is pour it lightly and kind of get it around the edge to where it'll stick to the PVC without going on the PVC. And what that'll do is it'll kind of help my flow as I pour more and more color. It'll drag the black through it. And I'm going to do the same thing with the white. And the white is the heaviest. So it's going to want to sink through the most. So I just pour that the lightest. Go back and hit a little more orange. I can look down in there and see my, my progress. All right, now I'm going to mix my glow powder. And I actually don't know how much to use because I haven't done this before. So I'm going to go for like that and that and hopefully that will be enough but you can see maybe it sunk right to the bottom of the cup so ooh, that's nice my resin's getting thicker so hopefully this will stay, stay suspended all right and what I'm gonna do is just kind of douse this just like I did with the other ones There's a little bit on the wall, which is okay. Now I can pour a little heavier. White. Go more, a little more glow. Followed by some regular orange. I'm just going to kind of top it off with just some sprinkles of each. We're almost to the top here. These are six inch blanks. And since this stuff will sink, I'm going to actually coat the top here. And as an experiment, we'll see how far it sinks through there. They're Halloween blanks. We got to do it. And I always have something to pour my overflow in. So today I'm actually going to use a ring blank. I'm going to do something kind of fun here. I'm going to pour the orange and the white into the black. Then I'm going to pour it sideways and see what kind of lines we get. Hopefully the light will show up those colors. I really over poured or over over made my resin. 
Those look really cool. And then what I'll do, a little quick top off here. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll get some glow. This is just an experiment to see how much glow powder we need to use anyway, so hopefully we get a good result. Now I am actually going to switch up since I used since I used the ring mold. I'm going to slide it onto this guy. And this just goes right in the rack here. This one can go right here. And this is a five gallon pot, so it's kind of overkill for this little amount, but I didn't have the two and a half gallon rack ready to go. And this is a California Air Tools five gallon. Nice pot, and it's pretty affordable. We do have these at Turner's Warehouse, and we are getting more in stock very soon. So this is a great one to start with, or if you want to do more casting. All right, so I'll fill it up with air, and then tomorrow we will make some pens out of it. Thanks for watching. All right, so we got the blanks out of the pot. Got our pen blanks and our ring blanks. I'll show you these real quick. Uh, look for a video in the future. I'm going to do a uh, Halloween-inspired black and orange ring, but these came out really cool. They look really good. I'll post some close-ups here in the video. But uh, So here's our pen blanks. What's really cool about these... PVC two blanks is they come out fairly easily. You just pop the plug out. You'll see that gap for the, the plug space. And typically you can hit them on something, the ground or a workbench. And really you just have to kind of pop them loose and they come right out. And that's a good looking Halloween blank. So now I'm going to turn a pen. I'm going to make a Zephyr out of this. The Zephyr is a really cool looking Beaufort ink pen that we carry at Turner's Warehouse and it kind of has a unique look so I thought it would make a good Halloween themed pen for use uh, if you're working in an office or at a desk it'd be kind of fun to have orange and black so let's make the pen